Good afternoon. It is my pleasure uh, to speak about one of very important topics in the field of nephrology, and it, it is a changing paradigm in thinking of dietary prescription in patients with chronic kidney disease, dietary potassium intake and the chronic kidney disease, what should nephrologists know? To start with, uh, this, this was the last presentation when I spoke about the primary prevention of chronic kidney disease and one of the very important lifestyle modification is encouraging potassium intake. This is for the general population to reduce the odds of incident chronic kidney disease. As you see here, the, uh, uh, the risk of chronic kidney disease is reduced from 1 to 0.78. This means 21% reduction of the incident risk of chronic kidney disease by encouraging potassium intake for the general population. And the, the details of lifestyle modification was highlighted in this video a couple of days ago. Today, I'm going to refine the advice for potassium to focus on potassium intake. Potassium, and I'm going to highlight the dietary because uh, usually we have poor styles in, in, in nutrition. Dietary consumption data indicate westernization. So westernized diets are high in processed foods. Processed foods are bad. High in sodium content, another poor style and low in potassium. So in this statement, three poor lifestyles. Uh, processed foods, high sodium and low potassium. All of them are harmful. The first point, what are the common foods that are high in potassium? These foods include leafy greens like cabbage, kale, spinach, fruit uh, like of vine-based plants, cucumbers, uh, eggplants, bump tomatoes, and a lot of issues, root vegetables, carrots, onion, radishes, beans, bees, uh, chick bees, green beans, kidney beans, pea, soybeans, uh, tree fruits, oranges, bananas, grapes, strawberries, tubers, potatoes, sweet potatoes, yams, and the milk and yogurt. All these are good sources for potassium for the public for the healthy persons. And if we encourage this style, this will reduce many diseases that I'm going to mention. What is uh, perhaps underappreciated is that animal proteins are also high in potassium, especially those from orange meats, organ meats, and cattle. So a lot of sources for potassium. The first point in, in this presentation, what are the benefits of potassium in the, in, in, the, in the food? So benefits of increased dietary potassium intake is summarized in this table. Blood pressure lowering effect magnified under conditions of high sodium intake and in black subjects. The mechanism, potassium can lead to nitritic effect a decreasing adrenergic outflow and vascular tone uh, favorably affected. So all these are mechanisms behind the blood lowering effect, blood pressure lowering effect of the potassium in the diet. Reducing stroke, another a second benefit. Why in encouraging potassium intake reduces stroke? This may be blood pressure dependent or independent on blood pressure lowering effect. What are these effects? Uh, throw throw uh, uh, potassium in the diet reduces formation of atherosclerotic lesions, reduces the radical formation and the platelet aggregation, decreases the vascular smooth, smooth muscle cell proliferation and migration. All these are beneficial effects plus blood, blood pressure lowering effect to reduce 
ستروك بون هوميوستاسيس فود انريتشد ان بوتاسيوم بروفايد ا بيس لود هاي بوتاسيوم مي هاف ا دايركت افكت اون بون ميتابوليزم ذات از فيفرابل كيدني ستون ريسك ديكريزد باي بوتاسيوم بيكوز اوف بيز لود افورديد باي بوتاسيوم ان ريتشد فود and decreased urinary calcium excretion due to direct effects on transport in the distal nephron. So all these are beneficial to reduce kidney stone formation and decreasing progression of chronic kidney disease. So encouraging potassium for general population reduces incident to chronic kidney disease. And in the early stages of chronic kidney disease, Potassium containing foods may be associated with the reduction of the progression of chronic kidney disease uh, through uh, bioavailability of phosphate is decreased with plant proteins because phosphate is binded to phytate. And this is in comparison to organic, either animal or others. And base load ameliorate metabolic acidosis and metabolic acidosis and phosphate may be uh, associated with problems of CKD progression. So all these are beneficial effects of increased dietary potassium intake. Again, blood pressure lowering effects, reducing stroke, bone hemostasis beneficial effects, reducing the stone formation in the kidney and decreasing CKD progression. All these are beneficial effects. So, uh, this is one of the paradigm shifts. It is a time for paradigm shift concerning potassium restricted diets in CKD. Severe restriction of potassium in the patients with CKD may be associated with non compliance and the complications. And don't forget all these beneficial effects of encouraging the potassium. The major problem that I cannot minimize, I cannot neglect at the risk of hyperkalemia if we have uh, patients with advanced stages of chronic kidney disease. In this table, I'm going to give some, uh, some tips how to reduce the risk of hyperkalemia to get the benefits from potassium containing foods with the minimization of hyperkalemia by dietary manipulation. So characteristics of a diet enriched in fruits and the vegetables that minimize hyperkalemia. We may select carbohydrate load causing stimulation of insulin release and the stimulation of insulin release can lead to potassium shift inside the cell like bananas because bananas include some carbohydrates. So I can make the balance and this will stimulate insulin release that uh, minimize the risk of hyperkalemia. Increase the alkali content, and this is another important point, toward promoting shifting of potassium into cells. Increase the potassium secretion, so uh, increase the alkali contents of, the, of food containing potassium can lead to shifting of potassium to the cell, inside the cell, and increase potassium secretion through uh, the BH effect on renal outer medullary potassium channel ROMC in collecting that. High fiber contents in these foods in, uh, that lead to increase the stool, stool bulk and less potassium absorption, decrease the constipation. And we observe this in some patients uh, uh, who were afraid of uh, hyperkalemia and they were restricting completely potassium containing sources. They had constipation and as well as developed hypokalemia. Possibly increase the kidney potassium secretion via gastric kidney crosstalk. Possibly increase the clonic potassium secretion. All these are beneficial effects of high fiber contents within fruits and the vegetables that, is, that are rich in potassium. Lack of exogenous administration of potassium as flavoring unlike uh, meat products. Uh, to put in mind, cooking may be beneficial because if we put the uh, 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 little boiling or putting it in warm water is beneficial to get rid of some potassium, but drying of fruits may be associated with increasing potassium 
So drying is bad, enhances potassium content. What about exercise? Why it is green? As I mentioned, every time, green means beneficial. What is the link of exercise with potassium? Exercise improves muscle strength. Improvement of muscle strength increases potassium uptake by these muscles. So if we encourage exercise, this will ameliorate hyperkalemia. Processed foods, this is, uh, uh, we deal with processed foods as rich in sodium, but sometimes they are uh, uh, a hidden source of potassium. And there is a formula known in the markets about plant-based meat alternatives, free of meat and without uh, uh, rich in potassium, low in sodium, but I think it is not uh, adequately studied and I cannot recommend the plant-based meat alternative up to this moment. What are the other approaches rather than diet dietary manipulation? So if we are dealing with coronary kidney disease, we should assess level of kidney function to better define the risk of hyperkalemia. Discontinue drugs that interfere in kidney potassium secretion, inquire about herbal preparations. So we advise totally against herbal remedies because they are adulterated by non-steroidal and other drugs. Discontinue non-steroidal, even selective COX-2 inhibitors. All these can lead to hyperkalemia. Avoid potassium containing salt substitutes. I don't like them. Thiazides or loop diuretics, loop diuretics if estimated GFR is is less than 30 milliliter per minute. If GFR is above 30, we can use thiazide. Both thiazide or loop diuretics can facilitate and reduce the risk of hyperkalemia. Sodium bicarbonate, if the patient is acidotic, because correction of acidosis will ameliorate hyperkalemia. Consider long-term use of binding drugs the, uh, especially the newer comers of potassium binding agents like petromere or sodium zirconium cyclosilicate. All these are beneficial. If the patient is diabetic, we should correct the diabetes because osmotic load can lead to redistributional hyperkalemia. If the patient is treated uh, with RAS inhibitors like angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, and receptor blockers or mineral corticoid blockers, what should we do? Measure potassium one week after initiation of such a therapy or after increasing the dose of the drug. For increases in potassium up to 5.5, decrease the dose of drug, or if taking some combination of S inhibitors, ARB or mineral corticoid blockers, discontinue one and recheck potassium or consider long-term use of potassium binding drugs. The dose of spironolactone shouldn't exceed 25 milligram daily. And when used with S inhibitor or ARB, this combination of drugs should be avoided if estimated GFR less than, less than, than 30 milliliter per minute. Always search for drug combination and stop unnecessary medication. Sometimes we give the newer potassium binding agents to facilitate the use of RAS blockade and to monitor serum potassium because we don't like hyperkalemia. For potassium less than 5.6, despite above steps, it's above, above or equal 5.6, despite uh, all these, consider long-term use of binding drugs uh, 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 to enable use of RAS inhibitors if clinically indicated. So not to deprive the patients from RAS blockade, especially if potassium is equal or more than 5.6, we can use potassium binders and to continue and to monitor serum potassium. This just to show that these drugs may be associated with hyperkalemia. So this is, an epidemiologist study, uh, including more than 375,000 individuals, 55 years or of age or older, and hyperkalemia was very noticeable, 12% overall, particularly 
in patients with coronary kidney disease con or congestive heart failure, elderly individuals, and the users of mineralocorticoid receptor antagonist. If the patient demographics is within this group of patients, we should monitor the patients. So what I would like to say from this presentation, potassium is good. And we should exhaust ourselves for proper prescription of foods containing potassium, how to monitor patients in a risk of hyperkalemia, how to follow the dietary approaches and the drug manipulation to reduce the risk of hyperkalemia. And so the individualization approach is of paramount importance and it can make a great difference. And would you please write in the comments on the video on the YouTube and send uh, me any questions uh, about potassium and diet. So this is a changing paradigm in thinking of all nephrologists. At this point, I should, I should say, uh, thank you for, very much for your attention. And uh, I, I hope that you'll find it uh, important for your practice. Thank you and goodbye.